Ever feel like you're doing this teaching thing alone? You don't have to be. Share Teaching is all about sharing the workload through the power of collaboration and teamwork. Together, we'll walk through all the difficult parts of teaching and learn how to streamline our processes, fine tune our time management, and develop a more manageable workload. If that sounds like a dream come true to you, then welcome to the Shared Teaching Podcast. Let's share in the teaching to make those dreams a reality. Now here's today's Shared Teaching. Welcome back to the Shared Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Susan, the creator behind Shared Teaching, and I want to just say welcome and thank you for being a listener. If you are a new listener, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast if you like what you hear, and then you'll have all the future episodes streamed right to your favorite podcast player. Today, we are listening to episode number 67, where I'm going to discuss my top 10 first grade read alouds. So if you are a first grade teacher and you're looking for some good read alouds for your class, you have found the right place to come and find some. Now, I'm sure you've heard of quite a few of these, but maybe you just didn't think about using them for your first grade. Uh, The first one we're going to talk about is the Magic Treehouse series. Now, this is a favorite among teachers and students. It's written by Mary Pope Osborne. And according to Scholastic, the books are written for grades two through three, so that makes them a really good first grade read aloud. I like to choose books for my class when I read them that are a little bit above their reading level to get them to kind of stretch to want to read them and also to just get them excited about hearing some new books. Now, students love to hear all about the adventures of Jack and Annie as they travel through the Magic Treehouse to places around the world in this 38-book historical fiction series. So with 38 books, you can imagine you can be reading these for quite a while, but I recommend reading just maybe one or two to tease the series and get your students wanting to go and read the rest for themselves. Now, you're going to take adventures to Africa, Greenland, and even Texas as Jack and Annie learn about the important historical events and figures that have happened in these places and time frames. The second book I want to talk about is Ramona, and I'm sure um, we all love Ramona Quimby from our childhood. We have fond memories of hearing or even reading Ramona ourselves. I know I do. And this is an eight-book series that has now become a favorite of both teachers and students. Perfect as a read-aloud, this series of eight books has been made into a movie called Ramona and Beezus, which is actually also the name of the first book in this series. Ramona is a very relatable character for students that kind of feel a little bit different from everyone and just don't quite fit in with the idea of quote-unquote normal. Ramona is a quirky little girl with a great imagination who has a tendency to get in trouble for her mishaps, which I feel like a lot of students would find relatable and they would see that they are making that connection and having that in common with Ramona, which is why I think a lot of students and myself um, have always loved Ramona. The third book is Lulu and the Brontosaurus. Lulu and the Brontosaurus is written by Judith Vorst, and Lulu is a bratty girl used to getting her own way in this very funny chapter book. Lulu doesn't get the Brontosaurus she wants for her birthday, and so she takes it upon herself to head off into the forest to find one. Throughout the story, there is a catchy tune that students will love saying with you, and this makes it a great read aloud for your first graders. I love books that have a little bit of repetitiveness to them that gets the students involved and saying it with you as you say it. Judith Forrest won't disappoint you and even offers several surprise endings in kind of a choose-your-own-adventure style. This story is told in first person with the narrator often injecting him or herself into the story with their own opinion. Lulu and the Brontosaurus is a unique story that is sure to keep your first graders entertained. The next 
book is Adventures of Pippi Longstocking, which is another one that is a classic children's book that's been beloved by generations, myself included. Adventures of Pippi Longstocking is written by Astrid Lindgren. Lindgren, maybe? Um, Pippi is a spunky and independent young girl who lives without her parents and just has her monkey and horse for company in a quirky old house. The story is full of adventure, humor, and heart, and is a great choice for early readers who are just starting to explore chapter books. Pippi's Great Adventures continue in a series of three books, Pippi Longstocking, Pippi Goes on Board, and Pippi in the South Seas. All three of our available in one volume, which is called The Adventures of Pippi Longstocking. As always, I recommend reading the book before you share it with your class to make sure you feel it is appropriate. This book was written in the 1950s, and there is a reference to, because Pippi is basically an orphan, there's a reference to her father being a cannibal, which I don't know if we really want to have those conversations. (laughs) And I forget about her mother, but some things like that might come up in the book. So it's always important to preview a book for yourself before you begin reading aloud to your class. And then you can always kind of change out a word or skip over a small section that doesn't affect the story plot if you're finding things that are not areas that you want to bring up and discuss with your students. The next book is Snot Stew by Bill Wallace. This book is a silly and gross tale. I mean, it is called Snot Stew about a boy who accidentally sneezes into his stew and turns it into a magical concoction. The story is sure to get some laughs from your students, and it's a good choice for reluctant readers who might be interested in books that are a little bit silly. Snot Stew is told from the point of view of two abandoned kittens. It's another student favorite, and Snot Stew is a quick and easy read for your first graders. Bill Wallace is an author that's known for tackling difficult issues such as bullying and disabilities in a way that is relatable to young children. So in this story, we want to know how far will Kiki's brother Toby go before he really gets in trouble and turns into a big bully. So this is a great book that's a fast read that will get your students interested and maybe some other books by Bill Wallace. Next up, we have Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So if you're looking for a fun and imaginative story, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl is a great choice. The book follows the adventures of a young boy named Charlie Bucket who lives poorly in a small house with his family. Charlie wins a tour of the chocolate factory from the famous Willy Wonka by finding a coveted golden ticket in a chocolate bar. When Charlie takes the tour, he encounters many strange events that are sure to keep your readers wanting to hear more. This timeless book has several movies, including one featuring Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka, And there's another movie all about Wonka that is in the works to be released this year. At the time of this podcast, that would be December 2023. The newest movie is going to show us how Willy Wonka brought the Oompa Loompas to work at his chocolate factory. And after reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory to your first graders, this could also make a really excellent writing assignment. Asking students, how do you think Willy Wonka found the Oompa Loompas? Let them tell you the story because that is not explored within the book. James and the Giant Peach is also by Roald Dahl. And I remember one of my elementary teachers, and I don't remember what grade it was, reading this to the class and I hung on to every word. James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl is a classic children's book, which many of these on the list are, and there's a reason for it, right? They're timeless, entertaining, and just feel good books that students love to hear year after year. So this book follows the adventures of James and it's, he is a young boy who escapes the miserable life. Sorry. He escapes his miserable life by sailing on a giant peach with a group of friendly insects. Dahl has a vivid imagination, witty language, and imaginative characters that make this book fun to read aloud to your students. 
It's a story of friendship, courage, and hope, and it teaches some valuable lessons about perseverance and kindness. I feel like this book is a must read for any first grade teacher looking to engage and inspire their students. Next, we have Heartwood Hotel by Callie George, and this is another great book for young readers. It's a charming and heartwarming story, which is why it's called Heartward, right? <laughs> About a young mouse named Mona who discovers a magical hotel where animals can stay and rest. The story is full of friendship, adventure, and again, heart, just like some of the other books I've talked about, and is a great choice for students who love animals and nature. Next up, we have Because of Wind Dixie by Kate D. Camillo. Camillo. Uh, it's a touching and emotional story about a young girl named Opal who adopts a scruffy dog named Win Dixie and the adventures they share together in their small town. The story is full of themes of friendship, family, and forgiveness and is a great choice for young readers who are looking for a heartwarming and relatable story. Because of Win Dixie is another of the read aloud favorites that has a movie you could watch with your students afterwards, assuming it meets the criteria for showing a movie at your school. So for example, my school, we cannot show anything that is above a G rating unless we get special permission. And of course, you always want to preview the movie yourself, once again, just like reading the book, before exposing it to your class to make sure that you agree with the content inside because you ultimately are responsible for sharing that with your class and you want to make sure that you have vetted it as a good choice. All right, last but not least, our 10th book is the Mercy Watson series. Mercy Watson is a series written by Kate D. Camilo, same person that wrote Because of Winn-Dixie, And these books are about a lovable pig named Mercy Watson and the adventures she has with her owners, Mr. and Mrs. Watson. The stories are full of humor and, again, heart. I feel like I've used that word a lot. (laughs) And it's a great choice for young readers who are just starting to explore chapter books. Read the first in the series of the six books to get your students wanting to read the rest on their own. So overall, I feel these books are all great choices for first grade classroom read-alouds. They're full of imagination and humor, and they're sure to capture the attention and imagination of your young readers. So just to recap, we have the Magic Treehouse series, Ramona, Lulu and the Brontosaurus, Adventures of Pippi Longstocking, Snot Stew, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant Peach, Heartwood Hotel, Because of Winn-Dixie, and the Mercy Watson series. Happy reading, and I also have another podcast episode, which is my best read-alouds for second grade. So if you haven't listened to that one, I suggest giving that one a try. And that one is episode number 54. So thank you so much for listening to the Shared Teaching Podcast. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. (laughs) Within my blog post, if you want to go and read this in order to take some notes, if you're driving or something like that, you can always go to sharedteaching.com forward slash podcast and find the newest episode at the very top. Or this is at sharedteaching.com forward slash podcast best-first-grade-read-alouds. And that will show you this blog post with the pictures of the books and the authors. And I am an affiliate for something called bookshop.org. And if you haven't heard of them before, they are an amazing organization that helps independent local bookstores be supported by more people because we don't want them run out of business by any of the big box places. We want to keep our mom and pop style bookstores. So if you shop through bookshop.org, it's kind of like Amazon where they filter through and have many different sellers, but then the sellers for this particular organization are very specific local bookstores and they ship them directly from their store to your home and I just feel like it's a great service keeping those small stores alive and supporting local businesses. So you can find my affiliate links within that blog post if you're interested. Otherwise, 
Thank you so much for listening, and I will be back next week for an all-new episode. You are not going to want to miss this. I have an incredible guest. I was so excited to get a chance to interview her, so make sure you tune in for that episode next Wednesday. Bye for now. If you've loved this show, then join me in sharing the teaching, hitting that subscribe button, and leaving us a review on iTunes so we can be found by more teachers like you who are ready to start sharing the workload. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Find new episodes each week on shareteaching.com. Thanks for listening to the Share Teaching Podcast. Podcast.